Veris Research presents the New Mexico Frontiers Digital Show. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the inaugural production of New Mexico Frontiers, the digital series. Of course, this is the sister version of our on-air New Mexico Frontiers. And uh, today we are talking uh, with one of the one of the funders, one of the investors of Saracap. And uh, Ritesh, your company has kind of started getting some headlines here in New Mexico because you've got some interest to us uh, in in the land of enchantment here. Before we start unpacking what uh, what Saracap has planned for the land of enchantment here in New Mexico, tell us a little bit about Saracap. Who are you guys? Sure, Chad. First of all, thank you for having me. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Regarding Seracap, uh, I am one of the co-founder and uh, partner at Seracap Ventures. Uh, my name is Ritesh Agarwal. We started Seracap in 2016, based out of Costa Mesa, California. And a uh, little bit of background. Uh, I come born bottom in India, uh, moved to US in 97. Uh, since then, been working in technology for almost now 25 years in various positions into Fortune 500 companies. And all my other partners, we all worked for each other, worked with each other for quite a bit of time. And in our last previous life, when we were uh, together in a services company, we all decided to start Seracap. Uh, primary reason was that uh, before Seracap, we were doing the same thing, but we were doing it at the corporate level. And we, we were giving a handsome return to the company, but we were seeing that our hands were tied. We were working against the guardrail, you know, how the corporate world works. And we decided that uh, our goal is to invest into early stage companies, which have the potential to, uh, I would not say change the world because everybody claims it, but make a, a, a good uh, impact on the lives of common people uh, by providing them or enabling them to use technology in their day-to-day -to -day -to life and have the actual change in their uh, uh, workings. So with that, we started Saracap in 2016. Uh, we invest in early stage companies. When I say early stage companies, it doesn't mean it's a PowerPoint company. Uh, we invest in companies that have the team, that have a team, they have some kind of a product or early stage product and some traction on the revenue. Our sweet spot on the valuation side is between seven to twenty million dollars, and we invest only in three domains. Uh, one is the cybersecurity, second one is enterprise AI, and third one is healthcare. And we call it we call it call it as uh, healthier secure planet. Healthier means uh, health tech, secure means digital security, which is cybersecurity, and the planet is any technology that touches the planet or helps the planet to uh uh side better those are the companies that we invest in this is our fund three fund one fund two uh is closed implemented we have invested till date in 21 companies we have seen seven exits so far uh and why new mexico uh, our very first company that we invested came out of lanl name of the company is viome started in new mexico stayed there for a while and then we moved to uh, seattle and uh, we have raised considerable amount of money from few institutions like Sun Mountain Capital, as well as SIC. And we invested, if I'm not mistaken, in four uh, companies out of New Mexico, 3DGS, Scorpius, uh, Robotic Skies that move out of New Mexico. Uh, and we are looking for uh, more investments into New Mexico. Gotcha. So as you were saying, there there are certain domains that uh, Saracap is is really focused on investing in. How did you guys land on those particular domains and those areas of investment and those areas of technology and work? Short answer is that's all we know. These are three domains where we have the expertise. All the partners within Saracap have worked uh, or have specialized in one or the other domain. Like my expertise is most of, mostly on the enterprise AI. Uh, my uh, one of my partners' uh, uh, expertise is in the healthcare. Another partner who happens to be the CIO uh, is uh, I will not say the guru, but he is the thought leader in the cybersecurity. So this is where we have the maximum experience and ecosystem. So we started with this three domain. But as we grow and and we go to fund four and fund five, we will be uh, adding new domains like fintech. In fact, we have started uh, investing small portion of the money 
into fintech as well as space tech. And that's where, again, I see New Mexico uh, will play a bigger role or New Mexico ecosystem will play a bigger role in Saracat journey uh, when we get into the space tech. Yeah, and obviously uh, a lot going on here in New Mexico in terms of, of that domain, so to speak. And New Mexico obviously has a great history in that area, Sandia National Labs. We've got a lot of uh, infrastructure that is already kind of there. Is that one of the things that uh, maybe, as you said, that you have these companies that you were investing in in New Mexico, um, was was that one of the things that maybe played a part in why Saracap took a greater interest in our state was, was because of some of the history and, and things that have already been happening here? Yes, that is one component. Other component is that uh, uh, throughout the course of our journey in last eight years, uh, we got, uh, whenever we, we thought about that, you know what, we are stuck, we got uh, the solution coming in from New Mexico, whether it's funding, whether it's a deal flow, or whether it's a few exits that we have seen. So uh, New Mexico, I believe in our journey or in our course, has played a major role in our growth. Uh, as I said, two of the large institutions based out of New Mexico, Sun Mountain Capital and uh, SIC, both have invested considerable amount of money in Seraca, which really helps us to uh, invest and invest in the right set of companies. The second piece is that uh, the way we look at New Mexico is, I believe, uh, a very good talent, very, very good university system. And being a, uh, being a Sandia, Sandia Lab and the LANL being there, I think access to the... Uh, I think world-class uh, IPs is there. It's just we have to put the whole ecosystem around it to tap into those IPs and see how we can commercialize it. And that is what one of the large undertaking that we have taken to go and explore the options of taking the IPs out and uh, commercializing it. And Vio has been one of the uh, first examples that we have. It came out of LANL and then we commercialized it through our investment dollars. That IP was commercialized and now it's close to I will not say a billion dollar, but it's very close to becoming a unicorn in the span of six years. Wow. Um, we we spoke b before this, Ritesh, um, about um, some challenges that that you see that New Mexico has uh, in its environment that you're saying that that may potentially be roadblocks for us to really blow up as a, a global tech hub. I'm wondering if you can expand a little bit on, in, in your opinion, what some of those challenges are uh, and if you have solutions on how to fix them. Yes. So, uh, you know what, every every region, every country or wherever you go, there are a bunch of challenges and you have to deal with it. The number one challenge I see in New Mexico is I think capital is there, will is there, talent is there, and uh, you know what, startup ecosystem is there. But it is not maturing at the pace it should have matured by this time. And primary reason is that uh, the fuel to any startup is the money, right, or funds. Uh, how fast you can make it available and how much can you make it available. So in terms of fast, I think it's there when you start a company, the startup money is there, but the growth money is very hard to get. So I'll give you an example. I moved a company, uh, which was based out of Bay Area into New Mexico, and it's a growth company. So growth company means what? They need a lot of money to fuel the fire, right? Now that money is not easily available. And, and, and it's very hard to convince the institution to invest in growth companies. Whereas if I flip it, if somebody wants to start a company, that money is easily available. You want to start with 250K, 300K, 400K, easily available. There are so many uh, VCs, small VCs are out there that will do 100, 150K. There is, uh, I think, uh, a good ecosystem of uh, investing in when you're just starting the company or coming up with the new ideas. But once company reaches to a certain threshold, right, or it is stuck, not able to reach to a certain threshold, you need money and you need the ecosystem to fight. That, I believe, is missing and focus is not there. So we at Saracap is what we are trying to say, that look, when you or anybody committing to a, a dollar in a startup, please commit at least three to five million dollars for the life of the company and help them grow. Because if they don't grow, they will die. Startups are very simple. They have to grow and they have to reach to a certain threshold. And once they, if they once they reach the first, first certain threshold, then they can grow on their own or other large VCs or PE will come. But if they have not reached to that certain threshold, then 
they will die very quickly also, or they will become stagnant, which is equal equivalent to dying, right? Right. So that is one problem that I see that the focus is not there on the growth. Focus is on fueling the fire in the initial stages. Second one is that the overall ecosystem of selling the product. So now you have a company that is bringing up some innovation and bringing a new product. Now you need the ecosystem also where they can go and sell the product, right? So that they start generating the revenue. And that is equally important. Decide the funding. So if you have built something, you have to sell it. That focus is also not there. So what happens is the company that does well, they start moving out of the state and they go to other states where they are able to establish themselves. They're able to get funding and they are able to sell their product. Plus, once they go establish there, that's where all the talent start moving because the employment comes there. So if you look at it, the holistic view, uh, I think the issue I see in New Mexico is that A, not building the ecosystem of buying the product locally from the startup. Second is not funding the company enough to get them to a certain threshold. And that equates to the amount of risk capital that is available in the market. And that's where we need maximum help. Money is there. Talent is there. These two things are missing. And once these two things come, New Mexico, I believe, uh, could be the next uh, tech capital beside the uh, area that we have in California. Right. And, you know, we do see and we had also spoken about the fact that the Bay Area, a lot of people are there moving out of there. Things are just not sustainable long term. And of course, New Mexico, a lot of wide open spaces, a lot of opportunities to bring these businesses in. Um, the solutions to fix these are, in, in your opinion, are they are they simple solutions? What are the next steps to make it uh, friendlier, more supportive for some of these businesses uh, to thrive to the point where they won't have to leave New Mexico once things get going? Yes, yeah, solution is fairly simple. Uh, I don't think it's a rocket science or somebody has to go and think and come up with an innovative solution. I think it's all about uh, the will and at the same time, who's going to lead the pack. Uh, in New Mexico, if you go and look at it, uh, who all are funding uh, the startup ecosystem? If you talk about the government, government plays a big role. Uh, SIC, NMF, the NMFA, these are the institutions that have the money and they have been traditionally funding it. And on the private side, there are large family offices that have played a big, very big role in funding the startup ecosystem. So if you look at it, this is a perfect combination. You have a government uh, funding, you have private funding, and then you have uh, small VCs uh, that have that get the money from both the sources. I might my take, if I were to do it, I would rather have a coordinated approach between private sector and the public sector and go after one or two domain and say, this is where we are going to fund. And the key is that when you're funding, commit the dollars, commit A amount, X amount of dollars for that company. Just don't fund 250K and say, yeah, they will grow on their own. Commit $3 million, set the KRAs for the CEO and say, you need to meet these KRAs. If you meet these KRAs, you will have the money available for you. Right? That's because for a startup CEO, the number one problem is what? Besides building the product and finding the consumer for that product is the money, is the funds. If you solve that problem, we have seen it, like whether you look in Texas, in Dallas, what has happened, or you see in Bay Area, or you see in any uh, startup uh, capitals around the world, this is how they have done it. Once they get two or three new successes, uh, good successes, then you know what? This ecosystem starts picking up on their own. So this is not a rocket science. It's just... Uh, a coordinated approach is needed and somebody who knows, understand this ecosystem, how to build the company, how to sell the company, sell the product and then get the right valuation and then go for m and This is the whole uh, three or four steps that we have to do. Somebody who knows it, has done it multiple times are the one who should be leading the pack. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So let's let's talk about um, some of the, the goals that you may have five, 10 years down the road. You said you've got some companies that you're working with here in New Mexico. Uh, where do you see Zeracap's uh, footprint going within the next five, 10 years here in New Mexico? So you know what, we have established our footprint and I'm, if you ask me, uh, am I very, very much proud of it? Yes, whatever we have accomplished, I'm very proud of it, but at the same time, I think Saraka would have done much better uh, in terms of funding the local companies uh, that falls into our wheelhouse. Well, look, we have invested in 3DGS. 3DGS has done amazingly well, and they will do very, very well. Scorpius has already uh, 
has done amazing and now uh, they are in the next round of uh, growth. Uh, and uh, Robotics guys, we invested, uh, it was a New Mexico company. As soon as they start seeing the growth, they moved out and moved to Utah. Uh, beside this, we are still looking for uh, good companies that we can fund. Uh, but this is what I'm this is what I'm looking for. If I get a good deal flow and I could get the right team, I will not be shy to invest and make a commitment for the life of the company. I want to see at least one or two companies do a blockbuster exit out of New Mexico. Uh, at Saraka, we have taken two step process, two prong approach. One is that we keep on looking for the right set of companies, we invest. Second is that few of our portfolio companies that are outside New Mexico in Dallas or Bay Area, we move them. So there's one company based out of Dallas that we are actively looking for to invest. And I'm very proud to say that uh, they just got JTIP uh, program approved. So now they have all the incentives to move their headquarters from uh, Dallas to New Mexico. And they're looking for the funding. Uh, once they get, I think, $2 million funding from the local ecosystem, they will go ahead and open the office, hire 20 engineers, and will build or not build. They have built the product already. They will basically uh, launch the product as well as the uh, uh, products designed for New Mexico ecosystem from New Mexico. So that's the commitment that we have given. Uh, and I'm very sure by end of this year, once they have the funding done, they will move their headquarters to uh, New Mexico. So this is, uh, we are trying, uh, we are trying our best to see which formula is going to work. So far, we have not been that successful, but I'm really looking for uh, that as time progresses, uh, local ecosystem of uh, private money and the uh, government money, they look the potential, they look into the potential of the companies that we have and uh, give them the opportunity to grow from New Mexico. And uh, I want these companies to stay in New Mexico. I don't want them to leave once they uh, reach to a certain pressure. Yeah, same. We don't want them to go anywhere at all. Um, last question that I have for you, Ritesh, and this, you know, this with the understanding that uh, there may be a number of makers, there may be a number of entrepreneurs that are watching this right now that are working in one of those domains, and they're thinking to themselves, boy, how do I, what, what's, the, what's the next step? What piece of advice could I get from a venture capitalist such as yourself to get the attention? If there's one thing that you could share with uh, a maker, an entrepreneur out there, that you may be collaborating with down the road, what would that piece of advice be? My advice is only, to, uh, I will actually give two advice. One is that don't be shy, right? Uh, uh, be very bold. You have taken the first step, which not many people uh, in their career are willing to take, which is leave your uh, comfortable life and get into the uh, startup world. Startup world is not easy and starting a company from the scratch is not easy. So you have taken the first step. Second step is be, be very bold. What you need, spell it out very clearly. Your ass should be very firm and should be very direct. Don't hedge on that, right? And, and Sarak, companies like Sarak would be very much involved or very much enticed to work with those kind of CEOs who knows exactly what they want and how they want it to be done. So that's my number one advice. Second is that if you have something which you believe is uh, uh, worth discussing and uh, you are looking for advice, reach out to us. Uh, you can have my contact number or go to saracat.com, uh, send an email, whatever it is. I would be more than happy to work with you to see how A, we can help you and B, how we can fund you. That's what we do for a living. Yeah, go to the experts, ask them. Uh, that website, one more time, Ritesh, if people want more information. It's www.saracap, C-E-R-R-A-C-A-P.com, www.saracap.com. Okay. Well, we appreciate all this information, really insightful and very exciting that Sarah Cap has got their their eyes on New Mexico. Uh, I feel that, you know, more people like you that really believe in and in investing in New Mexicans, that's what's going to take us to the next level. So we really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Yeah, Looking absolutely. Forward. Absolutely. Appreciate your time. I'm sure we will be talking again soon down the road. Uh, but in the meantime, folks watching at home, if you would like more information on this digital special uh, of New Mexico Frontiers with Sarah Cap, we will have all of it online at krqe.com. Until next time, I'm Chad Brummett. We'll see you then. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video.